Uh, okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, first GLODEM webinar series uh, of uh, this semester. Uh, today we are very happy to have uh, Mete Yıldız with us uh, to, to present uh, his work in uh, public policy, uh, behavioral uh, public policy units unit in, in uh, Turkey. Uh, Mete Yıldız uh, uh, completed his undergraduate degree in uh, political science and uh, public administration department uh, in uh, Middle East Technical University. Next, uh, he, he, he um, got his uh, master's degree from University of Southern California. And uh, finally, he completed his uh, PhD at uh, University of Indiana at uh, Bloomington. Uh, professor uh, Yildiz is currently a full professor at um, Hacettepe University's Department of uh, Political Science and uh, Public Administration. Uh, his uh, research uh, interests are uh, very wide. Uh, he's, uh, some of the topics that um, she, he has been uh, publishing uh, about uh, include uh, government reform, uh, e-government, public policy, local government, um, comparative public administration, and networks in and around of um, governments. Uh, and today uh, he's uh, going to share uh, his research on uh, behavioral public policy units uh, in Turkey. Uh, this is based on a recent uh, paper he had uh, published. So uh, without further ado, I'll leave the floor to Dr. Yildiz. Uh, so uh, we will listen to, to uh, his presentation and then uh, we will take questions uh, in the second half of the webinar. Thank you very much for this very kind introduction. Um, I would like to share some slides with you. Let me share my screen. Uh, I hope that my presentation can be seen by everyone without a problem. Uh, as you mentioned, it, this is uh, something that we have been uh, have published uh, electronically. It hasn't been published in paper yet. Um, it's a forthcoming article um, with a PhD student of mine, uh, Aicha Kusseven. Uh, she is all about dissertation and writing her uh, dissertation on this topic, on this very topic. Uh, I have been working on public policy uh, analysis issues um, for some time now. You can see some of the articles, uh, some of which I, I have written as book chapters in uh, Yunesh and Jenner Hoca's book as well. And, and these are my books on public policy. Uh, the one on the right, Kamu Politikası Kur'an ve Uygulama, is awarded uh, TÜBA Awards, Türkiye Bilimler Akademisi Awards, um, and have been used in many public policy classes, especially in masters and PhD. And the one on the left is more recent, 2020. Uh, it's a COVID child. Uh, technology ve kamu politikaları uh, is another interest of mine. Um, nudging seems to be, or behavioral public policies, seems to be a, a more and more popular subject in public policy studies. And basically it's using behavioral sciences to understand and change uh, according to some manipulate human behavior to increase the success of policy design and implementation. So we are trying to find more adaptable public policies by changing the behavior. And as of last year, there were more than 200 net units in the world, most of which are located in governments. And the first such nudge unit was um, created in the UK. But after that, many countries showed interest in creating nudge units. A similar unit was created in Turkey in 2018 and originally in the Minister of Economics. Right now it is in, uh, within the Minister of Trade. Uh, and uh, this created an interest 
in, in Aicha and me to understand why this unit was created, what, what, what were the motivations behind its creation, how, how it has developed over time in the last uh, three to four years. Uh, currently, uh, the name of the unit has changed. Uh, it has become a little bit more complicated, including uh, E-İhracat Dijital Pazarlama, Davranışsal Kampolitikaları, and Yeni Nesil Teknolojiler. Uh, almost lump sums everything in it. So our motivation as researchers to um, study this issue was to understand the emergence and development of this unit. And to do that, we have analyzed several official documents and we have conducted in-depth interviews with ministry officials. We didn't get clearance uh, to use these uh, interviews with the uh, ministry officials yet. Uh, it, uh, it has been a long procedure, still uh, trying to get a permission for it. But we have also uh, conducted interviews with the organizers of Nudge Boot Camps, which I'm going to mention uh, in a minute. Uh, we have used uh, data from those interviews about Nudge Boot Camps that we have uh, used in our article uh, as a source. Uh, in fact, the interest in establishing a Nudge Unit was uh, sparked in 2015. Uh, and from 2015 to 2018, a couple of things uh, happened, uh, especially a couple of experts in uh, the Ministry of Economics at that time were sent to universities in the United Kingdom uh, where they were introduced ideas and applications of nudging. Um, they got in touch with the nudge unit in the United Kingdom. Uh, and when they came back to Turkey, and to continue working as experts in the Ministry of Economics, um, they established contact with the UK Embassy in Turkey, which provided them with material support and logistical support as well. Uh, we were trying to make sense of this process by using Kingdom's multiple streams model. Maybe uh, you have been um, talking about this model in this class as well. And um, basically it's about um, explaining change in public policies, uh, opening of a policy window of opportunity and uh, to do that, you have to merge three streams, a problem stream, a policy stream and a politics stream if you can merge those three streams, you can open a policy window of opportunity. You can put a certain issue on the agenda and do something about it. That is, of course, there are other things such as um, policy entrepreneurs, which um, help the opening of policy windows of opportunities. But uh, I wanted to simplify the model uh, as such. So uh, when we were listening to stories uh, about the creation of the nut unit in Turkey, we thought that we could, we could use Kingdom's multiple streams model to explain what's going on. The problem stream seems to be uh, the question of how to increase the awareness and use hopefully of uh, behavioral public policies in Turkish public administration. And the nudge unit seems to be a solution um, for this problem. The politics stream, uh, both organizational politics and uh, general politics, these experts in the Ministry of uh, Economics then in the Ministry of Trade, um, they coupled this problem with the solution and uh, asked the top management in that ministry to uh, agree with this establishment. Uh, they agreed because they wanted to show that uh, their ministry uh, was innovative uh, in doing things in public. The policy entrepreneurs in this story are experts in the Ministry of Trade who went to United Kingdom to get educated. 
it, they got in touch with the United Kingdom Behavioral Public Policy Units. And when they came back, uh, they got funding from UK Embassy as well. So we can uh, see policy diffusion in the story, policy transfer and policy entrepreneurism uh, at the same time. The entrepreneurs were the experts, as I mentioned. There were some domestic actors who contributed to the establishment of this unit, such as bureaucrats and politicians, the minister himself, uh, and after that, herself. There are some non-Turkish actors, such as the U UK BIT unit, the British embassy, so on and so forth. Uh, all this was happening while um, the system was transforming in Turkey, the administrative system transformed from a parliamentary system to a presidential system. So the, so the BIT unit in Turkey, the NAJ unit, has to answer this question, how to uh, find a place for itself uh, in the new system. Uh, to do that, uh, they try to um, make network connections, both inside and outside the bureaucracy. Uh, one such connection was the organization of Naj boot camps in universities. And they have um, organized three boot camps, uh, one in Middle East Technical University in 2018, and two in 2019. The second was in Boazici, the third one was in Marmara. And uh, they tried to get the support of the academia and uh, try to come up with interesting ideas for nudging from both academics and from university students. Another part of the uh, network effort was towards other ministries and public institutions. And the NAD unit, the Turkish NAD unit, held various meetings with ministers of health, transportation, national education and finance. And they brainstormed in these meetings about possible topics of cooperation, possible topics for nudging in Turkey. Uh, unfortunately, since the pandemic hit at the end of 2019, early 2020, just one experiment was conducted by this unit regarding nudging. In fact, it's not called an ex experiment, but uh, the correct uh, concept is to use is randomized control trial. This was conducted in 2018, and it's about increasing applications or government support in exports. To do that, they have sent uh, emails, email letters to um, 30,000 export firms. They have tried three, uh, four different uh, email types uh, plus one control type that has received no emails. Um, orally, uh, we know that the experiment was somehow successful but uh, formal results have not been announced yet, so uh, it's a little bit uh, unclear that the final result is not official. And what can we learn from a case like this? Um, it confirms previous findings about um, setting up units, either about much or about other things in government. You have to have sustainable and high level political support. That's a must. Other than that, you have to have a competent team, a dedicated team, uh, which existed in the Ministry of Economics and the Ministry of Trade. Uh, this team has to know how bureaucracy really works so that they can, uh, when they meet bureaucratic resistance, resistance and they can overcome this resistance. And finally, they have to have enough resources such as a legal mandate, enough personnel, money, resources, and network connections. 
there were unfortunately some limiting factors as well. The bureaucrats already have a heavy workload, so they are not very enthusiastic about having extra work, uh, conducting experiments and analyzing the results. So they are uh, either slow or resistant to adapt new ideas, implement new ideas such as nudging. Uh, of course, the biggest limiting factor as we have all been experiencing is the pandemic. Uh, more um, nudge boot camps were planned. In fact, the fourth one was supposed to be in Hacettepe. Uh, we were trying to uh, organize that, but the pandemic hit and we couldn't do that. Um, the, one of the hardest parts, I guess, one of the biggest challenges is to translate these results of these experiments to specific public policies, preparing laws and regulations about this. And this hasn't become a norm yet, unfortunately. Uh, so we cannot really say what the long-term uh, effects of these interventions are because we are unable to replicate them. Uh, in time being. Uh, so the, the future challenges seems to be finding the right place for this nudge unit. Right now it's in the Ministry of Trade, but in this new governmental system, um, we think that the right place for this nudge unit would be within the organization of uh, the presidency. Uh, that would make more sense. And uh, what else, for which other topics and challenges and public policy problems should we use nudging for? An obvious um, place to start is vaccination policies. Many people are either opposed or resistant to getting a vaccine. So can we use nudging behavioral public policies to increase uh, vaccination um, percentages, numbers? Yes, we can do that. And there are some examples of it uh, in other countries, but um, I would be happy to hear your suggestions regarding uh, the areas, since there is a unit in Turkey to do that we have to find real challenges and try to use nudging to overcome those challenges. Uh, thank you for listening to our research. I hope that it is uh, interesting to you. Uh, if you would like to ask questions, um, uh, please do. Uh, we would be thrilled to answer your questions. Uh, if you'd like to contact us, these are my uh, email and IHS email as well. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Yildiz. Uh, so uh, we have a question uh, from uh, Ceren. Uh, I think it's more like a comment. Uh, Ceren, were you um, not able to complete the question? Because I see it, it's a more of a comment. Um, Okay, guys, uh, so floor is open for questions. Uh, you can raise your hands and um, ask your questions. Um, yes, Dana, if you can, uh, you can ask your question. Uh, hello. Thank you so much for the presentation, first of all. I think it's very beneficial and it would be really beneficial for Turkey right now. But Thank I you. have a question about that. Uh, since the policy is an adaptation from UK and we have completely different uh, political cultures and also they are a very strong parliamentary democracy, but we are in a presidential system. So do you really think that uh, it would work in Turkey. And that's a very interesting question. Thank you for asking me uh, that question. Uh, in fact, um, I don't think it matters too much uh, regarding the performance of the NUDGE unit if a country is presidential or parliamentarian. 
Um, in fact, one of the early adopters of the Nudge unit was uh, United States, which has a presidential system. It doesn't seem to be a problem to have either a presidential or a parliamentarian uh, system to me. Uh, and there are Nudge units in other presidential countries. Uh, but it may be more uh, related to the political culture and bureaucratic culture of a certain country. Um, other than that, the system of government doesn't seem to be a limiting factor. But that's a good question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, I have a question. Uh, I'm curious about uh, the background of the staff. Uh, in uh, in this uh, um, behavioral public policy unit in Turkey, uh, do they come more from economic economics backgrounds or uh, public administration? Uh, and maybe we can also uh, extend that question uh, to uh, to these nudge boot camps. For example, did they take place in economics departments or were there general events or uh, public administration, political science departments? And that's a very I'm trying to understand because it it seems usually a, it it seems like uh, economists are dominating these fields, uh, even though we think of it as a subject of public policy and public administration. So how is the situation in Turkey? And that's a very spot on question, very important part of this subject. You are right, and these experts were most educated in, in the economics discipline. And uh, most of these nudge unit and the nudge boot camps were organized by the economics faculty in these um, universities. But public policy analysis, by its nature, is multidisciplinary. And when the nudge unit has been enlarged, uh, they had, for example, sociologists as well included in the staff. And uh, interestingly, uh, public administration and uh, political science and public administration departments have the most uh, public policy analysis classes. So there's a, um, if you ask me, uh, there's a lack of uh, dialogue between uh, different academics coming from different backgrounds, different departments. But uh, in theory, uh, there has to be both students and academics from very different uh, backgrounds, not just from social sciences, but um, sciences like, depending on the question that we are analyzing, uh, medicine, biology, chemistry, so on and so forth. Uh, but at the time being, or at the beginning of uh, the establishment of the NAD unit, it was more like uh, an economist view. Uh, you were right uh, in your question. Thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, I think Jeran uh, completed her question and uh, she's saying, you know, what do you think is the reason uh, that didn't really create much of an impact uh, in media? Uh, people are probably are not uh, very aware of this uh, department, right? Although it's a very hip uh, uh, issue and field to uh, to be you know a part of the government uh, why do you think uh, that's uh, what, how can we explain that in fact the the answer to jeren's question uh, lies um, in the answer to your question and this unit was established in the minister of economics and minister of trade so it had limited appeal in the bureaucracy itself and the media it, it is perceived as something about economy, not mm -hmm. uh, just government in general. Uh, mm -hmm. It didn't touch uh, important public policy issues that we all are experiencing. Uh, so that is one reason. The other reason, I guess, is the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, it was getting some traction uh, at the end of 2019. Uh, if you search, for example, on Google, about this unit, you will find lots of press coverage in 2018 and 19, but beginning from 2020, um, the agenda has changed considerably. And a third and a final reason um, for the um, non-popularity of this uh, unit is that it has been established not within the presidency 
especially after the change of the, the system, but in a, a very specific and technical agency. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jera. Mm -hmm. uh, Miric, uh, you can ask your uh, question, let me. Okay. You can unmute yourself and ask. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thank you for your presentation, first of all. Uh, I would like to ask uh, what type of nudging activity would you consider for vaccination? And I would like to know if there's any examples from other countries. And that's a very good question, Mirich. Thank you. Uh, in fact, uh, before nudging uh, or before um, implementing such um, an experiment, uh, you have to know uh, or we have to know uh, more about why people are uh, hesitant uh, about vaccination. To do that, uh, before the experiments, uh, we have to conduct field studies so that if we can understand why people are opposed or hesitant, then we can design uh, certain nudging experiments. Uh, at this time in Turkey, as far as I know, we, we have very limited data regarding the reasons uh, of people opposing or being hesitant about vaccination. Uh, only after getting that data, analyzing that data, we can design uh, an experiment in nudging. Yeah, that's true, right? Because, for example, when we look at the U.S., um, it's um, uh, this uh, vaccine hesitancy comes from a particular, uh, for example, political group. But when we look at Turkey, it comes from all kinds of different demographics, uh, people with different political ideologies. Uh, exactly. So uh, uh, for marriage and uh, for people who has uh, similar questions. Uh, I have written a think tank report that they may want to read. The think tank is Özgürlük uh, Araştırmaları Derneği. It has been published, um, I guess, in June. Yes, it was published in June. It's about vaccination policies and uh, it answers, uh, hopefully, a lot of similar questions. Uh, Mirich, uh, if you can send me your email, I can send you the report as well, or I can send it to uh, Güneş Hoca uh, to distribute to the ones who are interested in it. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Mirich. Uh, uh, Alper, you can ask her a question. Uh, just a second, I will. Yes, you can unmute yourself and ask her a question. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Sure. Uh, thanks for the uh, presentation. And it's a very useful uh, presentation uh, for all of us. Uh, my question may be a bit similar with the uh, others, but I want to ask that uh, many regulations, especially coming from uh, European Union uh, in the process, uh, many of them, uh, actually some of them, uh, didn't work. Uh, so, uh, and this one uh, also comes from a different country, uh, UK, yeah, uh, it may be useful there, but uh, generally uh, the regulations coming from top to down regulations, uh, I think uh, there may be some problems uh, when, we, uh, when we compare with the down to top uh, process, uh, it may uh, cause some problems. Uh, actually. The question is, do you think these top-down uh, regulations or, or nudging units uh, can uh, compete with the uh, other unofficial uh, nudging units, actually? Uh, what do you think? Uh, what do you mean, I part with unofficial uh, nudging units? Uh, many, there are many clicks in Turkey uh, mm -hmm. to impress, to influence uh, regulations. Uh, public policies, so, uh, and there are many and uh, strong uh, clicks, uh, but the official ones uh, generally, uh, as a bureaucrats, uh, it may be uh, more difficult uh, to compete with the unofficial, uh, these clicks, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, Alper, thank you very much for your question. Um, you are right that um, I can answer your question not uh, within 
uh, nudging itself, but regarding policy transfer in general, uh, you are right that top-down policy transfer um, is more likely to fail than bottom-up transfers. Uh, but uh, since I had limited time, I couldn't um, tell the whole story uh, of our research and our article. In fact, this was a bottom-up policy transfer. Uh, the idea came from not the uh, top management, but from uh, experts uh, of the ministry. Uh, so um, I cannot really say that it is a top-down approach to nudging or policy transfer. It's bottom-up. Uh, it has been um, made successful by uh, the ranks uh, of the ministry rather than the managers of that ministry. So uh, that's why I believe it has been um, somewhat successful. Thank you, Alpesh. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, somewhat related to that question, uh, Gerg Back uh, has a question. Gerg Back, do you, do you want to read your question yourself? Um, I can read Jukberg's question if you okay. want. I can answer it uh -huh. uh, in the written form. Um, Jukberg, thank you very much for this question. Um, I don't want to speculate too much, uh, but if I have to speculate, I would say that uh, this unit has uh, a potential uh, for um, conducting successful nudge experiments, uh, but uh, a couple of things need to happen to increase that potential. Uh, one thing, uh, as I mentioned before, it has to be replaced, uh, placed from the Minister of Trade to the presidential um, administration. Uh, in that uh, scenario, uh, its capabilities will increase uh, tremendously. Uh, Secondly, it has to increase its staff uh, and not just in numbers, but in, in resources, dedication, so on and so forth. Um, but the uh, short answer to your question is, yes, I believe it has the potential, the capability to enact successful policies if placed within the presidential uh, administration. Thank you for your question. Okay, uh, Meta Hocam, can you see the questions in Q&A uh, box? Uh, Let you can see the questions you want to answer. Uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Kadja Ismail um, asked the question, uh, he or she, sorry, I, I, I don't know the, the gender. Uh, I'm wondering whether there have been any cases where implemented nudge policies failed. Uh, of course, there are lots of uh, failing nudges uh, as well. Uh, it has uh, so and so a success rate. Um, do you want me to give uh, examples of failed nudges? Um, sure. Uh, vaccination yeah. policies is a good example. Mm -hmm. There have been lots of nudging uh, in vaccination, which has failed in many countries. Uh, Firuza Nasirova has a question. What are the, what are some of the examples of a successful project by the nudge unit? Unfortunately, there was just one project, one experiment. Uh, the official results have not been announced, so it is hard to say if it is fully successful or partially successful. Uh, she also wrote, what sectors does the nudge unit in Turkey usually cover? It's in, within um, the Ministry of Trade, uh, it's in uh, the General Directorate of Exports, so their specialty is on exports, and that was the topic of the Naj experiment as well. Thank you, Firuza. Uh, Nuris Nachevgan wrote, do you think that the Naj unit has a respect in Turkey? Uh, do you think that they have enough influence on government policies, especially after the system change? Uh, I tried to indirectly uh, answer this question. The answer is, um, according to me, is uh, unfortunately no. Uh, if, it, if it can be uh, um, placed in the uh, presidential 
uh, administration, it may have more influence. Uh, I guess that's uh, what you are getting at as well, Nuresna. Thank you for your question. Uh, Alp Chobanoğlu asked, thank you for your presentation. Um, I would like to ask that the world is changing and this change brings some obligations. Nudges sound very liberal to me, but are often used to promote good things as far as I can tell. Is it ethical or unethical to make these nudges mandatory in the future? For example, environmental issues. I think we may not have options to choose in the future about health or about health. Uh, you are right, Alp. Um, one of the principles of nudging is uh, nudging for good. So we, uh, or the nudgers, don't try to manipulate people or uh, make it mandatory. The idea is to make people uh, have the right decisions for themselves without manipulating. So your point is well taken. Thank you, Alp. Mete Hocam, also when uh, we were discussing uh, this new approach to uh, policy making, uh, we discussed some um, uh, ethical issues around nudging, and whether uh, using uh, nudging in um, health or uh, other policy do domains is the overreach of um, government action or not. Um, so there are some ethical um, debates around this. Uh, so uh, does this unit in Turkey, do they, do they um, uh, engage with these debates or do they have any opinion on these as far as you know? And that's very good. That's a very good question. Unfortunately, uh, this unit uh, was fully formed, but they couldn't perform lots of functions. Down the road, I believe, they have to engage with these ethical questions, uh, especially uh, when nudging um, will be done in the realm of personal choices, uh, we'll see more and more of this. Uh, a couple of things that I can think of is about, for example, smoking, mm -hmm. uh, obesity, uh, vaccination, of course. But right now, since uh, the unit is not very active regarding nudging, and the unit has different responsibilities as well, as you have seen with the um, change in the name of the unit. It has lots of uh, um, different uh, concentrations, but down the road, uh, I believe we'll have more ethical discussions. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, so uh, Eylem uh, has a question. Let me ask Eylem, you can... Uh... Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for your presentation, your article with uh, Ayça Kustavan triggered many questions in my mind. And I would like to ask two questions. One is about a possible nudge policy application and uh, minimizing informal economy. And the second one is about the challenges ahead for transparency in nudging policy. Uh, for example, for informal economy, there are several arguments stating that uh, many structure, uh, structural economic problems such as high taxes and inflation lead to informal economy and illegal trading in Turkey and in many developing countries. So how can a nudge policy uh, be effective to minimize informal economy and illegal trading while there are many structural challenges uh, in, in the economy? I believe that the presence of structural uh, uh, challenges uh, limit uh, the effectiveness of a nudge policy. I would like to ask this question for you. Uh, and also my second, second question is about the possible challenges of transparency. For example, in your article, you stated that the Turkish government has conducted ex experiment within the firms and uh, some firms received positive messages uh, within the perspective of psychology and the uh, one group also received more neutral uh, messages. So I believe that this approach, for example, send, sending more positive uh, messages to one group and more neutral to another group, may be related to uh, nepotism or patronage mechanism in developing countries especially. So I would like to uh, learn more about your opinion in this case. Thank you very much. Eylem, thank you for both of the questions. Uh, on the first one, I totally agree with you. That would be a very good idea to apply nudging uh, to problems about informal economy. Uh, when I said that the nudge unit uh, members 
uh, have to know about uh, general politics and bureaucratic politics. Uh, that was what I was getting to as well. Uh, structural problems or structural limitations has to be acknowledged and uh, factored into uh, the nudging efforts. Uh, definitely, I believe you are right. Uh, regarding the second issue, transparency is key. And that possibility that you mentioned is possible. Uh, the only way to uh, counter, um, to, to control uh, any kinds of uh, wrongful behavior is transparency. And uh, it has to be um, put as a main principle. I agree. But um, we didn't see uh, any um, evidence of uh, nepotism or something else happening in this case. Thanks. Um, I also have a more of a, a practical um, research methodology question. Um, so you briefly mentioned about uh, getting permissions uh, to speak with government officials and how that process works. So because we have students here or maybe other researchers may be interested in um, that is something that um, changes over time. Uh, I have been um, conducting research about bureaucracy and um, dealing with bureaucrats for more than two decades now. Uh, some bureaucrats are more open um, to uh, share uh, information, share their experiences and such. And, of course, it depends on the topic, it depends on the person, it depends on um, what's going on in the world and uh, in the country. Uh, but as a rule of thumb, um, interpersonal trust uh, is important. Uh, networks such as school networks, mm -hmm. uh, where, when I find uh, a bureaucrat coming from Middle East Technical University, uh, it is easier for me to communicate with him or her, uh, but uh, informal um, networks matter, personal, interpersonal trust uh, matters. Um, the rapport that you uh, establish matters. Uh, it's, it, it doesn't have a clear cut formula. I guess it's something, it's part of the craft of the academicians uh, that you have to um, uh, try uh, and fail, maybe some of the time. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I, I couldn't uh, give you a straight answer, but that no, is no, the I think it's important. Like, for example, then if we were to try to approach a bureaucrat, it may be a good idea, for example. But in this case, the person okay. that we may have gone to the same schools. Uh, exactly. But in this case, and in the not unit case, the bureaucrats were very approachable mm -hmm. and they helped us a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Alper, uh, did you have another question or is the hand from your previous question stuck there? Uh, okay, uh, how about Mirich? Do you have another question? Uh, yes, I do. Um, sorry if I missed it, but did you talk about the subject of the one experiment that the Turkish unit did? And there was a question indirectly mm -hmm. about that. Um, since uh, I have the specifics in my article uh, and I had limited time, uh, I couldn't mention too much about the experiment. But if you are interested in it, uh, there is a book published by the Minister of Trade which explains the experiment in great detail. Mm -hmm. so, and it's uh, available on the, the ministry website as well. So uh, they just uh, sent uh, different, uh, differently framed emails mm -hmm. to these companies. And uh, the idea was which email framing works better to promote, to, to increase number of applications, right? Exactly. For example, in one letter, it was saying that firms similar to your size are applying for this grant. Why don't you? Mm -hmm. Things like that. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, any other questions? Uh, 
Uh, I guess there are no more questions. Uh, Mete Hocam, çok, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, making time to participate in our uh, webinar. My pleasure. Uh, for participants, if you have any uh, questions that you want to ask uh, to Mete Yildiz, uh, he shared his email address, but I'm sure you can easily uh, find uh, his contact uh, info. Uh, online. Um, so you are you typing it? Yes, I'm typing it right now. It's in um, the slides as well, both uh -huh. my email and IHS email. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much uh, to thank everyone. Thank you for the kind invitation and thank you very much for the excellent questions as well. Okay, so I think uh, the video will be available online uh, via YouTube and I'll share that link with you as well. Thank you very much. Um, well, have a, have a great day, everyone. Um, hopefully we'll meet in another Glodam webinar series soon. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you. Bye.